My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Leather Jam app and a series on YouTube tag 120 days jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. You are welcome to episode number 40 of the 120 days to jam physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at humidity and relative humidity. Humidity and relative humidity. Humidity is simply a measure of the amount of water vapor present in the air. Amount of water vapor present in the air. In the air. Remember, I told you that if this is air, or we say dry air, and you sprinkle water in it, or you apply moisture in it, it means that water vapor is smooth. Because vapor is water in gaseous state. Now, this dry air, there is a particular amount of vapor it needs. Once you give it exactly that amount of water vapor it needs, we say that the air is saturated. Or we have saturated vapor. Now, if you give this air lesser water vapor that it actually needs, it therefore implies that it still needs more. So you are giving it the vapor lesser than the required one. So it is unsaturated. They say pour water inside salt and drink. This is the salt. You pour more water and the water stays inside here. So it's almost the same thing as you are eating the salt like that. So there is not enough water, it is not dissolved. By the time you pour enough water to turn the salt into solution, you say okay, it is saturated. This is just what we want. Once it is enough, saturated. If it is not enough, it is unsaturated. Now look at this. When you hear relative, it means we are comparing or we are relating two things. Why humidity is the amount of water vapor or measure of the water vapor present in air. Relative humidity is simply the amount of water vapor that is present in air over the amount or the total that the air needs to be saturated. The one present over the total it needs. Look at it. We know that air requires a certain amount of vapor to get into saturation. So if the air that is pre the water vapor that is present in the air is being compared with the amount or the maximum that the air needs, we say that that is relative humidity. So the full formula becomes mathematically relative humidity is the mass of water vapor present in air over the mass that is required for saturation. By the way, relative humidity is measured using an instrument referred to as hygrometer. Hygrometer is used to measure relative humidity. And to measure relative humidity, you need to have a hygrometer and two thermometers side by side. And relative humidity is inversely proportional to change in temperature. Now look at this uh, formula. Relative humidity is mass of water vapor in air over the mass required for saturation. Now if the mass of water vapor in air is 0 0.03 grams and 
the mass that is required for saturation or the maximum amount of water vapor required in the air is 0.15 grams the relative humidity will simply be equals 0.03 grams over 0.15 grams that is how to calculate or solve questions under relative humidity and relative humidity does not have a unit because we are comparing the same thing another formula to calculate Relative humidity is that relative humidity is the saturated vapor pressure at dew point over saturated vapor pressure at ordinary temperature. Dew point is the point temperature and pressure at which the water vapor in air is just enough to saturate it. What do you think will happen if the mass of water vapor in air is more than the required? It means we have more water vapor. It means we breathe super saturation. We need, for example, 0 0.15 grams for saturation. Now we have 3 grams. That shows that we have more water vapor in air than required. That is excess. So what happens when we have excess water vapor in air? This takes us to two types of humidity we can have low humidity and we can have high humidity high humidity means we have more water vapor in air than required as such you can experience rain wet season and winter so um, wet period rainy season and winter are examples of high humidity because humidity is measure of water vapor present in air once you have more water vapor, you can have wet season, rainy season, winter. Now, by the time the water vapor or the mass of water vapor in air is lower than the mass required for saturation, it means the air still needs water. The air is still dry. And what is the result of low humidity? The result of low humidity will simply be dry atmosphere, hamatan or summer. If you look at Hamatan season, you notice that the air is still dry. There is not enough water for saturation. So any water you pour out during Hamatan, it dries up immediately. Your skin dries, everywhere gets dry because there is no enough water vapor for saturation. There is all saturation. And I do hope you found this interesting. Now, up to this point, we agree that when you hear high humidity, Things like wet pe uh, period, wetness, rain, winter. And when you hear low humidity, stuff like dry atmosphere, hammer town, summer, they come to your mind. And I've said it over and over again that humidity refers to the amount of water vapor present in air, how wet or dry the air is and relative humidity is the water vapor present in air over the water vapor or the mass of water vapor required for saturation now this humidity what is the effect and control around us what can we see or say that no 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 High humidity is not good for this thing, or low humidity is better. The effects of humidity can be seen in many ways. But for the sake of this class, we shall restrict it to human body, restrict it to industry's location, restrict it to storage of food, on weather, and on air conditioner. So what are the effects of humidity and their control on the human body? on industries, storage of food, on weather, and on air conditioners. Now look at this. On human body, one of the if uh, we'll look at effect of high and low for each of these cases. For human body, when there is high humidity, there is low evaporation of body moisture. 
because your body is wet so this moisture will remain more they will hardly evaporate because even the weather is wet or when there is rainy period there is slow evaporation of wetness in your body remember according to the law of thermodynamics heat will naturally move from a hotter body to a cooler body if your body is hotter than outside it is easier for heat to go out but if your body is very very cold and the atmosphere is cold so there is little temperature difference so it will be hard for there to be heat going out of your body and during high humidity the skin is damp moist and sticky and this can be controlled by a natural breeze you can turn on fan to dry your body or air conditioner or natural breeze how about low humidity the effect of low humidity let's say stuff like amata dry air and summer on your body is that there is excessive evaporation and cooling of the body your body the if there is wetness in your body it dries up so there's evaporation taking up in the body vapor leaving your body and you experience dry throat <clears throat> dry and rough skin during low humidity and how do you control this by using the air conditioner or placing bowl of water around or planting flowers all these they help to control the effect of low humidity on the body now the air conditioner AC works on this principle that the air outside must always be hotter than the air inside in your homes hotels apartments you notice that for every air conditioner there is the one inside called the indoor unit and the one outside called the outdoor unit even if you are using the wall mounted ac the one that you put hole in your wall and put there is a part outside and there is a part inside if you go to the part outside you see a fan you see something like this at the side which is the condenser now when you stay close to the fan you notice that for a working ac the outside is hot right now when you go inside for a working ac the air inside is supposed to be cold so now how does it work the indoor units or the one inside we look at the room the goal is to make sure that it removes uh, wetness humidity and dry air from the room so it tries to suck the air in your room that is what the indoor unit does after sucking the air units then there is a heating part there or a cooling part which blows breeze on the air so evaporation and condensation take place remember evaporation is water vapors leaving while condensation is when gas changes to liquid so condensation of the ac is what you see outside all those water are dropping i am not basically teaching you full working of ac but there is some way i want to get out now if you have this your air conditioner during wet period or rainy season or winter your room there is enough uh, humidity there's enough moisture your room is cold and the function of this ac is to remove this moisture from your room to make your room fresher you will notice that it will be more difficult for the ac to do that during high humidity as such it will be working more and more and more it will be on almost throughout the period but during low humidity at least there is dry air in the room not humid so to be easier for it to make your room better and for storage of wood high humidity is good for food items like meat and fish this is why you can put these guys in your refrigerator because they need that uh, wetness they need that coldness they need that um touch of high humidity apart from these ones other food items or provision they don't need high humidity so low humidity will be good for those ones then the effect of humidity on weather is that high humidity produces fog 
or cloud. I explained this under condensation in the previous episode. Why, on the other hand, low humidity would produce clear atmosphere? On industries, high humidity will favor cotton spinning industries because it helps the fibers to go together. On industries, high humidity will favor glass, iron, and steel industries because all those guys, they get heated, the temperature gets so high. So all this moisture or wetness will help them to cool faster. But there is a problem. If you've achieved what you want in this iron, cotton, and steel industry, we do not need further high humidity because more moisture on this uh, material will cause rusting. So it has to be moderate. Now, low humidity favors manufacture of electrical components. Anything that has to be with electrical or electrical components, they don't play with or they are usually not friendly with um, wet or rain because it will cause a lot of problems. So, low humidity favors the production of any electrical equipment. So, there are many things you need to know under um, humidity, relative humidity, and under vapor. In the next episode, we shall have a summary and a wrap up of vapors, relative humidity, and everything expected of you. Good to see you, and make sure you get the Flash Learner Jump application and begin to play with a lot of questions. You get familiar with questions, and you are sure to do very well in your examination. See you in the next episode.